Right, you join me at the stunning Carfeath Reservoir. Now there's loads of these up and down the country and today we've come to target the silvers, massive heads of silvers in these venues. We're going to do things a little bit different. It's a big reservoir and normally you'd think maggots, casters, worms, pinkies. Not today. The secret is pellets. These venues see carp anglers week in, week out and they're constantly spotting pellets, boilies and all the silver fish, they're getting that acute to them that they don't want anything else. Right, like I've said before, carp anglers are coming here spotting in loads and loads of pellets. So in turn, the silver fish are switching over. The bait choice for myself, now normally you'd expect reservoir fishing, bream fishing, sweet, you know, sweet biscuity sort of things, maybe a little bit of fish meal. Um, I've sort of took the approach not even to bring like a biscuit bait, ground bait anymore. So all I tend to bring now is the adrenaline, betaine green, Depending on the, the weather and what the colour of the water is, obviously at the minute there's still a tinge of colour, so green's a really nice colour for them skimmers to come and settle over. Uh, obviously if it was winter and it was a lot clearer, I'd use the F1 Noir, which again, beautiful. In conjunction with the ground bait itself, and you don't need much, I tend to bring a couple of different colours of micro pellets. Now sometimes reds are better, yellows are better, or 50-50. Uh, these ones from Adrenaline are perfect, come in nice little plastic tubs. You're probably only going to use a quarter of them, you don't need many. You just need to put in a few little specks for them skimmers to come down, pick around. Ideally, you don't want too many particles because the, you want them to eat your expander basically. So that's, that's the micro pellets. And then from the hook, it's just a simple expander pellet. Got two sizes, four mils, two mils, sometimes a four mils best, other times two twos. And then yellow is a, is a personal favorite of mine. I tend to dye them with the adrenaline plasma. Now it's almost like a, a glycerin based additive. Smells of corn, beautiful smell. But if you do struggle with hooking expanders, it adds just that little bit more texture to them. So if you do have a couple of misbites, your expander ain't going to drop off and you'll be able to have a couple more goes at it. Right, another little secret, especially venues up and down the country. Micros are good, but sometimes having these tiny, tiny little one mil micros can just give you that little bit of an edge. By that I mean you haven't got to put as many in because they'll settle on the bottom and they'll get stuck in between the rocks and all the nooks and crannies and they tend to keep fishing your peg longer, grubbing about because they can smell them but not necessarily get to them and obviously if your expander's in the middle of that they tend to grab that a lot quicker so just another top tip having different sizes of micro pellets and different colours will help you catch more fish Right, typical rig that you'd need on a reservoir like this now obviously we've experienced really low water, so we're probably three foot down from where we should be. So obviously the rig will reflect that. We start at the elastic, we've got the high vis, three to four, solid elastic. First solid for skimmers, you know, really soft mouths. Makes your top kits a lot lighter and just a lot nicer to fish with. You're never going to pull out a fish, you know, you can strike, ship back, lift, perfect. The main line, it's actually 014. Now, it's quite light, some people like say, oh you need 017 and for anti-tangle, but the reason I've done that, I'm going to be fishing like 010s, 08s, and it just marries up a lot nicer on the loop to loop, so I tend to go for 014, it's robust enough, not going to get broke, so that's what I tend to do, and that's the low vis in 014. Coming down to the float, we've got a 4x16s rugby style shape, uh, I've gone with the 4 b 16 so I want plenty of weight down the bottom of the rig. I want to see every little bite, so positive shotting. And that's the midi wrap, 4 b 16 a rugby ball. I've gone for the fiberglass rather than the wire. It's been quite kind today, there ain't much tow, so I can get away with that. It just aids shipping out and less tangles, we just want to keep things nice and, nice and simple. 
we've got two number nine back shots and that's just simply we're going to lay the rig in let the two back shots just hold the float and keep everything nice and tight so we can see any little dinks on the way down moving down got literally a strong bulk of number nine stots I do prefer the stots because obviously I can change the shotting pattern quite easily and it ain't going to damage the line at all and coming down I've got a number nine four inches away from the hook or a four inch hook length now some people think it's they tend to go like eight nine inches for bream fishing when fishing with pellets you want to see every little bite so I'd have no qualm and taking that number nine and putting it two inches away from the hook if there was a lot of fish there and I need to see every little bite but four inches is a pretty good start when fishing pellets and that's just coming down to a nice little loop to loop four inches of 010 lovies and then a small KM1 20s hook with a bait band I've set both rigs up today I've got another one identical one to fish soft pellets and one to fish hard pellets sounds a bit wrong in fishing for skimmers on natural venue with our pellets but trust me I'm seeing them week in week out and they're absolutely love them so how would you kick start the session knowing the venue which helps but I've literally put two cups of the adrenaline ground baiting and I've fed it in it like a, a wet sand castle so it's not dry, it's not a typical ball and the, and the aim for that is it's going to hit the surface it's going to go a couple of feet down and it's going to explode and give me a big carpet for them skimmers to come over we're after a big weight today, probably 60-70 pounds of skimmers you're not going to catch them on a coffee mug so we're going to have to, we're going to, have to make a big area so feeding it in a sandcastle, it's going to go down, explode, give us a nice big area to work from. So you could put anywhere between two to four, depending on there. You could put more in, but knowing the venue, we don't have too many fish there. Then obviously we've got to concentrate the fish then. So what I've done is I've put two balls of pellets. I've put some of the adrenaline micras, yellows, and then I've put some of the one mils in as well. And I've cooked them in from a height. I've made a tight ball, cooked it in front, so we make a little bit of sound just to draw some fish in. And that's my target. So I've got a big area, I've got my two balls of pellets, and that's where the majority of the fish are going to come. Obviously, when you get a big number of skimmers in your peg, that you know, they're churning up, they're creating a lot of disturbance, and they'll push that into a bigger area. But your main focus area is there. Now, I've shipped out, and what I've done is I've actually fished a dolly butt further than where I have been so I've fed there and I've fished here and the reason for that is there'll be that many small fish in the ball then bigger fish are just going to sit on the outside come round mopping up so you've got chance of catching two or three bonus fish before you actually come into your main feed so I've literally gone half a section past and it, and it has worked it's been there were cleaner bites started to catch some better stamp fish and then I've gradually, when the bites have dried up, just worked my way back onto my feed. And once I'm on the feed and the bites are slowing down, that gives me an indication when to top up. And now, top up wise, you could either go loose sandcastle again, the ground bait, make a nice big area, bring loads of fish in, or you could put a small ball of pellets in with some loose ground baits, again, the best of both. Today, I've put a small ball of pellets in, loose ground bait over the top, and that did the trick. Again, fishing past the bait and working my way back in. So that dolly butt is a real secret, really. You know, catching these skimmers and catching better fish, fishing around your bait rather than smack bang in the middle. Because I have tried it a couple of times, come back onto my feed, and it's just miss bite, miss bite. Eventually you catch one, I don't want that. I want to ship in, lay my rig in, clunk, bite ship back fish you know we've got to catch a lot of fish to make the weight so it's all about being efficient eating every bite we want to come back with the fish really right so we've come to a fantastic end of the session been uh, been fantastic Carfeith really is one of probably the best skimmer venues in the midlands at the minute full of fish and hopefully if you deploy some of these tactics in pellets and being a bit more positive and going through, through fish meal, leaving the maggots and pinkies at home, you can hopefully uh, catch a bag yourself.